So, uh, for those who don't uh, know, uh, haven't been following Fabricator well enough, there is currently a something in the region of 10,000 line patch up there that I would like all of you to review. Um, thank you, that's my presentation. I'll go now. Um, no, so, uh, what I've been doing is uh, working on uh, bringing k -Hut new stuff, kicking and streaming into the, well, into the 2010s, finally, now that we're leaving them. Um, so, but yeah, first, a bit about me. I've been, uh, uh, yeah, my name is Dan Lania Tuathra Jensen. I have been a member of KDE uh, since 2002. My first academy was in Glasgow where we got uh, little cups, uh, uh, plastic cups, which I'm sure everybody still has. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh yeah, sometimes I'm a bird. Um, I am an employee of Blue Systems, and it's under that guise that I've been uh, working on this project. Um, so, a little bit of history. Uh, we have a few frameworks uh, as it exists. We have had Anticare for quite a long time now. Um, it do, it's been called Anticare since forever. I have still no idea why it's called that. If anyone knows, please find me later. It would be nice to know. I'm sure there's some kind of historical reference there somewhere. Um, but yes, oh, sorry. It's, uh, Attica is a very straightforward wrapper around an XML-based uh, content delivery system called the Open Collaboration Services. Uh, we then have KNewStuff Core, which is uh, the abstraction based around uh, items of content uh, which can use either Antica or a static XML system, which means you don't have to have some magic server to operate with it. Uh, KDevelop uses it for templates, for example. Um, then there is what is then called KNew stuff because it is, we had to keep binary compatibility. It really wants to be called something else. It's the Q widget based UI on top of KNew stuff core. Uh, and then the very uh, the I, the things that I did in in 2000 end of 2017 called Kenu stuff quick, which was just a list uh, and an item which you could feed a, uh, a KNSRC file, which is the config files that define uh, what you're looking for, um, and it would just show that then in a list and you could interact with it that way through. It's really, really simple, uh, which um, of course wasn't quite enough. Uh, so uh, for our server, we have uh, the store.kd.org, which used to be built uh, on top of what was called the Hybo One framework. It was run by Frank Karliczek, who was here yesterday. Um, yeah. Um, it's it was fairly recently taken over. Um, uh, it the entirety of the KD store was acquired uh, by, uh, uh, by Blue Systems, but uh, in cooperation with the uh, EV board at the time uh, and put into a separate legal entity, um, which then takes care of all of the legalities around that, which means that all of the content is now controlled by the EV, but because of personal data protection legislation, not owned by the EV. Um, the, new, the old framework could not, for various reasons, be released uh, into free software, uh, but the new version can and was. Uh, it's hosted on... Uh, on git.kd.org. Uh, fabricator, even, sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I'm jumping ahead of myself there. Uh, all of that means that we have all of the control we need uh, to actually work on this stuff ourselves if we want to, uh, which on occasion becomes very important uh, because of some, yeah, there's a couple of details I'll show later on why that's important. So, um, the new things that uh, I've been working on since Beep. Yeah, that makes up. It was low battery earlier, but yeah, 
Obviously, I didn't tell anyone because I'm a clever person. Um, yeah, all of this is now queued quick. Uh, you will already be aware of the download, uh, the star buttons that say download, whatever, um, in various things. It's the current most used bit of KNew stuff, so of course, we need a queued quick version of that. I know that um, Kaiuva has created something which kind of wraps the widget and um, he was looking forward to being able to replace that because um, <laughs> yeah there, there is a widget in plasma which is our lovely cute quick based framework somewhere um, and with this we would be able to replace that um, that is what the new dialogue looks like uh, it's equivalent to what was the old uh, download dialogue and widget um, and I'm going to tell you that you shouldn't use it. Um, there is a bit of cleverness called a question asker and a question listener, uh, which uh, forwards questions from the UI less core. Yeah. And it allows you to just ask things and get, get answers in, a, uh, in an asynchronous fashion or synchronous if you should so desire. Um, that is the uh, existing uh, list and items which have had a bit of work. There wasn't the description weren't there, the sort of the thumbnails are a little more nicely laid out uh, and the categories and filtering options weren't there before either. Um, the page is what you should be using. Um, it's effectively the same thing um, that exists in the dialogue, uh, except it's you know much more uh, how we build apps these days. You've got a page and you dig into them. Uh, all of the new, um, all of the new, what are they called? Uh, the the new system settings pages are all based around this similar concept. Uh, that is actually a uh, KCM grid view. So it looks and feels very much like any other KCM, so it integrates very nicely with that. Um, if you then click on any of it, that is what it will show. You've got the details of any one entry shown in a, uh, in a much more pleasant uh, fashion uh, than what we had before, because uh, whereas before we used uh, a very simple widget, uh, which was, you know, a relic of the early 2000s. So the layout is very cramped, and it's yeah, it it looks old. It could probably be fixed, but uh, yeah, we were doing things with it anyway. So uh, ended up uh, building something which, uh, for people who use Discover will seem familiar somehow. Uh, a lot of this is intended to also get merged back into Discover. There's a couple of changes, but otherwise it is effectively the Discover components. Um, and then something completely new, which I was surprised to discover, KNew stuff never understood the concept of comments. It does now. so. Of course, we have comments, um, and that's one of those things where having uh, having it controlled by KDE is very handy because it was not before possible to read those in a proper fashion, and we can now. Um, and then, yes, there's the author component, which is not what you see there. It's what provides the information. I will show you how that's useful slightly uh, in a in a moment. Um, so to use a few of these components, uh, you've got the button, which is supposed to be the simplest way of accessing any of this. Uh, you just import KNew stuff, you instantiate a button, and you tell it what the config file you'd like to see is. You don't have to know the path, you just give it the name of the configuration file, which is exactly the same way that you would instantiate it as a widget just in Qt Quick instead. Um, then there is the list, which is a similar sort of thing. Uh, it allows you to use something 
very simple. Um, if you only need the ability to just show a list of items, you can use the list. Um, Peruse uses it, for example, my comic book reader. Uh, uses that instead of the page because it's much too elaborate, much too uh, verbose uh, for browsing uh, the books in the store. Um, and it just gives you uh, the ability to download things and then if you click on any of them, it'll show you, uh, it'll, it'll give you a list of the installed files from the thing that was clicked. Um, that is the page, which is the one that you are all supposed to be using for integration instead of the button if, um, or instead of the dialogue, if the button is not sufficient for your users. Um, it's intended to be about as simple to use as the, uh, as the button, but of course, because it is a page, it is slightly more involved. Uh, the button takes care of delaying the initialization of the new stuff engine, which is a really heavy operation because it does uh, serve talk with the server um, uh, to fetch basic information about what you what you like to look at, um, which means that uh, this looks a little bit involved, but the idea is that um, you just instantiate a page and then um, you don't tell it what your configuration file is until you actually push that onto your page stack. Um, and then there is that author component I was talking about before. Um, the idea there is that I, you, some of you will have noticed that in K about information there is for, for people, you can add an OCS username um, the idea is that you should be able to use this um, without really knowing anything other than that username. We have the concept of a default engine uh, or of a default content provider, which basically means that uh, that bit there shouldn't be necessary. It's also why that bit there also is not necessary unless you actually decide to point it at something other than the KDE store. Uh, the idea is that you can then, you give it your, you give it the username, which you can get from Kabout data, um, and then you will get an avatar, you'll get uh, the author's homepage, name, all of that sort of lovely information which we would all like to have in the About dialogues, but which currently isn't possible because it involves pulling in quite a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah, so a demo, very quick, just to show you that it actually works. Burp. So, so lovely. Right. Mm. Mm. And then you've got some comments and some reviews, which it then, oh yes, it also fetches that dynamically. So if you don't have an internet connection, it'll just show the username and the user sort of, you know, the, the, uh, the game brick sort of user icon thing, um, which it then also shows when you scroll through the list until it's loaded the information. Um, and, yeah, and of course, because this is uh, very visual information, we've got a couple of new view modes as well. So you've got something that looks a little nicer if you have really heavy visual content. So uh, in uh, Andy Betts asked if we could have something which was better for wallpapers, for example, because those little icons are oh, very, very tiny. So we came up with a layout that's more friendly for visually heavy content, which then is this one. Um, and of course, the really, really small, um, just an icon and, uh, and a name, view mode. Oh, yes, and the button, which just loads the dialog, initializes the engine, and operates in the same way as what you just saw. Um, 
There. And there we are. <laughs> that was hot new stuff, and it was real quick. So, we have plenty of time for questions, and we'll start with Elio. So, question is, why we have that space on the left? Why does the need to have a single one line and taking out 30% of the screen? Uh, let me just pull that one up again. Oop. It's a wet, very wide page, yeah. Oh, the, oh, the, um, that bit there? there yeah. That bit? Yep. That bit there. Um, that's a sidebar. This is not what you will see in your application. The bit that's page is the bit there. That's a page. So yeah, you won't see that unless you decide to have a uh, full width always on top um, side by in your Kirigami application. That's just, it, it's, that's, yeah. That's not the Knusoft dialogue. Uh, I have named it badly. It is a test tool. <laughs> uh, is it possible to include uh, new comments, or will it be possible to include new comments on the co comment, comment section? Right. So, currently, no. Um, and the reason is spam. Um, we have in the, the OCS API and Kernu stuff itself is able to allow you to make new comments. Uh, the problem is that we have had that API enabled on the server and we have never had so much spam. Um, it is, we never thought it would be a problem. Basically, we thought we were too small. As it turns out, that isn't true. Uh, so kind of a nice thing to know that we are a sufficiently large provider of content on the internet that spammers want to target us. But the problem is that we then can't allow people to um, pro do comments over the API as it exists right now. Um, it's also why uh, some people had the need of doing uploads over the OCS API, like create actual new uh, content items. It's the same issue. Um, and we had a couple of ways, like we've got a couple of ideas for how we might deal with this. Um, so like there is the idea of perhaps doing a network of trust uh, where if you are vetted by, um, uh, by a, a set of people as this is a person who is actually okay for providing content, uh, then you can be allowed to do so. Um, uh, a smaller set uh, verification s uh, step for comments, perhaps because they would not, you know, they're a slightly less crazy sort of thing to be allow people to do um, because they don't provide um, potentially damaging content, and for example, but. Um, but yeah, the, it's, a, it's a problem. The API can do it. It is effectively a social issue. So yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a really quick one. Uh, yeah. Since uh, uh, the content is now provided in a page, a thing that I love from a design point of view, uh, since now in the new pre-redesigned KCMs, they actually do support multiple level of pages in them. Um, did you already look into or do you think it makes sense to actually have all the get on new stuff content in KCMs uh, actually being, uh, um, uh, being uh, in a page in the same level as the as the main KCM? So, so like look and feel then you do get of new stuff and you see an exactly same looking grid of things, but that, that comes online instead of. Um, I haven't looked at actually integrating it into any KCMs, um, but the reason for using the KCM grid view for this is precisely that, that it is supposed to be, yeah. Yes, uh, it, yeah, 
yeah, having like actually doing a test to find out whether that works would be quite nice. Um, yeah. Hi. Uh, so, two uh, two questions. Is there is there a possibility to tag things? And uh, the, the, uh, and a remark is that you give exact numbers, while many app stores they give they give approximations to to not make people addicted or feel that that these numbers are meaningful. Is, 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 have you thought about uh, sort of blinding this a little, say less than a thousand, between one thousand and ten thousand or something, just to 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 avoid this very concrete? There's twelve downloads, which is. Um, I, frankly, I hadn't thought of it, um, but yeah, that's actually a good point. That would be a nice thing to add on top. What's the first one? Tagging, tagging, right? Yeah. So uh, one of the large things that I did last year was specifically to add tagging. So one of, like, it has been in uh, frameworks since, uh, someone asked recently, 5.51, uh, so the uh, end of 2017. Um, the effect is that uh, some content is not shown. Um, that's the default state for K new stuff since 5.51, is that certain content can be filtered out um, but it also then allows us to do things like uh, in Discover, there is an experimental uh, KNSRC file which shows app images which have been uploaded to the KD store, uh, which are then filtered by um, the file. Uh, they're filtered by file type, make sure there's only app images. It's filtered by uh, architecture and it's filtered by bit level um, and then to make sure that only app images which will actually run on your system get shown. Um, and it's the reason that sort of stuff is built as tags rather than um, information in the OCS API itself is that it is too specific to a particular type of content and OCS is supposed to be content type agnostic. Um, but it allows us a lot of wide-ranging possibilities like that. So in uh, the comic book reader, for example, uh, very like specific things like you have a series of comic books, you might want to have those in order. They are separate items on the store, uh, but you are then able to say, okay, that is the previous one, uh, and if you've got a diverging storyline, you can have those two items are the next, and you can, yeah. So th there's a lot of options in, in that. So in short, yes, there are tags. <laughs> One more question here. Yeah, um, a problem that Falker mentioned during his talk on uh, frameworks on Android, but also something we occasionally run into in Plasma, is that in past KDE frameworks, uh, we suffer a lot from historical baggage there where the UI tag that we were using at the time, widgets, is heavily intertwined with, with business logic in those frameworks. Things like a QWidget-based K-message box popping up or things requiring QWidget pointers to pass in parent windows. Uh, I'm curious, um, as you sort of rewrote the UI layer for the Get Out New Stuff framework, how does your approach now compare to that? Are you avoiding those mistakes, or I'm are we just swapping out widgets for quick, quick there? Nope, nope. I am avoiding it entirely, and it is actually something I would like something more familiar with event loops than me to have a look at. Um, that's the question asker listener thing that I was talking about um, earlier, which is literally. Uh, it, it is a complete conceptual thing. So you instantiate a question and you give it a title and a text and you know the various sort of embellishments of what a question is, uh, what type of answer you would like from it. Um, and then you just tell that question to be asked. It then tells any listener to ask the question. Um, in this case, there is a widget listener and there is a Qt Quick listener, um, and it will then show a visual version of that question in whatever form is needed for that particular uh, visual type. Um, I All have right. a suspicion it might also be useful for things like uh, screen readers and so on to be able to ask things 
or um, actually, let me see, he's not in here. Aditya. <laughs> hey, I'm thinking Mycroft could make use of that maybe. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's it took a while to work out how to do that. Um, I also had to abstract away from some bits of KO, KIO because I couldn't depend on um, uh, I couldn't depend on certain things that KIO depends on. So yeah, uh, but similar sort of thing. It's a really simple uh, job. Uh, it's jobs as in. Uh, K-Core add-on jobs um, uh, but which just do basic downloading. There's no magic in the, in the way that Keo does it. Uh, so yeah, th there's a couple of steps to get through to make sure that there is no widget requirement at all for KNU stuff core um, which also is why <laughs> yeah, it works for Discover which has been using that for some time um, and Discover could not uh, require uh, it couldn't uh, use Q widgets at all uh, because earlier versions of um, uh, Plasma Mobile wasn't able to handle it. Something like that. Um, there was yeah, there was something that didn't work right, and then we needed to be able to not have widgets. No, it wasn't an ability; it was a choice. We would we didn't <laughs> want widgets on the phone. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, no, it was like. Totally technically technically possible, but didn't want them. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was the yeah. There, there are so in short, no widget requirements in KNews of course. <laughs> Any other questions? Otherwise, there was a ten thousand line patch, right? Yes. So there's so that's only two hundred lines per person here in yeah, the room. Yeah, you can do that. Won't take long. <laughs> um, where is it? So take a good, careful look. We got a couple of minutes before the next speaker is up. So. Well, can you tell me how you made the presentation? Because it looked really cool. And I was wondering what te which technology you used. Oh, cute, quick. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so handcrafted, OK. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it uses the QML presenter tool. There we go, that one. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think we should do a live review here. No, That's not going to be effective. No. Uh, let's yeah, actually, it's a little bit dark. There you go. A bit easier to read. <laughs> but in about five minutes, actually, let's give you a hand first. All right. Woo! Thank you. Thank you.